key thing to, to recognise is that the economic case is only a small subset of the way people value things. And the whole purpose of public policy is to maximise public benefit. And if we define that benefit in very, very narrow financial terms, we're probably going to miss the rich things in people's lives, the spiritual appreciation, the sense of place, community, culture, the value of wildlife, quiet places, recreation, fishing and so forth. We just have to break out of the history of looking at things in narrow ways and that means helping policymakers with the tools to, to think about the world in broader terms, to think about the ramifications of one decision for the other areas of life that they've not historically been asked to think about. Policymakers have a lot of really hard decisions to make about our environment. And typically when policymakers are weighing up different options, they will take into account the environmental impacts that that option might have uh, and uh, the economic costs and benefits of uh, that policy option. Uh, but it's much harder to assess the social consequences uh, of, those, of those policy options. Uh, and so the work that, that we're doing is trying to capture some of those social values that people place on the natural environment so that we can get a better handle on how these policies might play out socially as well as uh, for the environment and in economic terms. Today uh, is the 27th workshop within this project. We've, we did about 10 with community councils in, in Scotland. Uh, we've done uh, 16 with divers and anglers across the UK. And this is the second workshop in Hastings that we're doing out of three with, with local fishermen, uh, uh, local policymakers, environmental managers. There's a hotel owner there. So it's, it's a very rich group of, of stakeholders in, in Hastings. The better the quality of roads, the more firms will be prepared to work in Hastings. Okay. I think it's increasingly important that communities are, are empowered to be able to talk about their values, their priorities with each other. And that I think there is also an increasing interest with policymakers of doing that, this kind of stakeholder involvement in, in consultation and discussion with local communities. It's been a fascinating process working with people here and, and people have been very uh, enthusiastic and, and excited about that. But of course, if there are too many tourists, it could adversely affect the quality of the quality of the water. I'm attending the workshops because I've got a keen interest in seeing the town's economy and position as a main tourist attraction develop and grow, and it will support the local economy, and it's something that's very important to us as a council. I guess what I'm saying is if this is a more attractive space, it will encourage the families, but also, I would imagine, more cyclists and other people using it. The importance of the workshops is it reminds us as individuals that there's a wider community within a very small square footage actually which have a lot of common goals and um, we can work together. It's really exciting going into these kind of workshops and seeing the sorts of things people say at the start uh, and then going through a process of, of, of really engaging with people's fundamental values and beliefs about these places, you know, their hopes, their fears and really deliberating over some of the quite difficult decisions that we will face in the future. You can see that by how these different things drive each other, that, you know, that kind of feeds into how these different kinds of visions might affect what Hastings will look like in, in 2030. The Marine Conservation Society is really interested in this piece of work because it is very timely. We're at a stage in the process towards ensuring a productive and biodiverse future for our seas where the international drivers are in place, there are national legislative implements in place in the UK, so our government is committed and enabled to set up protected areas in our seas right now which could ensure that our seas are productive into the future. I think that it's incredibly important to take account of the role that a healthy environment plays in maintaining our collective well-being. If we don't understand and appreciate that and properly take account of it in decision making, then we are at risk of making decisions which will negatively impact on the environment that we all depend on. So we've run this project now for almost two years and this is the last event to look at uh, shared values with decision makers and we found some quite substantial evidence that shared values cover more than just eliciting individual values with questionnaires alone. 
So I think we've really uh, laid down a convincing case to use more deliberative approaches and more qualitative approaches in addition to using money-based monetary economic approaches to valuing the environment. And also we've developed some very clear methodologies that decision makers are very uh, enthusiastic about. I do feel that this research is really going to help us as we go forward. I think it has really articulated how these values are very important and the critical next steps for us is to combine these values that are coming out of these conversations with some of the economic values in a way that decision makers can see that both of these are, have got merit and there's not one that's more important than the other that they both need to be combined and that's the next trick that we need to get to. You, know, not, mm. you can't determine how this should work in any one place but you can put forward ideas. Today's workshop has been really important for bringing together a, a bunch of people that have different views on this issue and also enabling us to see where the research has gone and how we can take that forward. The guide that these guys are producing is hopefully going to be something that we can really use in the future. I'm really excited about the, the, the capacity that, that these kinds of new approaches and methods have to enable us to live in a fairer, more democratic society in which everyone's voices are heard uh, and that enable government to take sensible decisions that are supported by as many as possible of the people who vote them into power.